we have looked at a few numbers today. I have some more numbers for you. 2020, there will be 9 billion people on the planet. 90% of the world will be covered by mobile broadband, so hopefully your grandmother as well will have coverage and a phone at the time. Uh, mobile traffic, as we talked about yesterday, will grow 10 times. Media is already being transformed. Other industries are following fast behind. It is going to be extremely important that we collaborate. We already see that in the way that we are working with social media, but it's also about the ecosystem that we need to create. Collaboration across industries and across companies becomes extremely important. It took us 100 years to have 1 billion fixed connections, as we talked about. There will be 8 billion mobile broadband subscriptions. Uh, whether it is 50 billion connected devices or less, there will be a lot of connected devices. Everything that benefits from a connection will be connected. F video will be more than 50% of all of the traffic that we will see on the network in 2020. More than 50%, but the estimates at this point coming out in the mobility report shows approximately 55% me uh, video traffic. And the networks become very important, and Ulf will come back to what does that mean for the networks that we will have to deploy. So media, as I mentioned, one of the first industries to transform, to be disrupted. Every other industry is in that path. We have heard about mobile payments, how can you do mobile health, connected cars, power grids, connected grids. Um, utilities of other kinds that will also be connected and will have to take advantage of it. Manufacturing as well as consumer, and this is more on the retail side. So industry readiness is uh, on a continuum, but every industry will have to adapt to the new requirements that the consumers will have for how they want to interact for the environment, for the benefit of the consumers, and for the new business models that will present themselves, all industries will transform. What does that mean for our operators? The operators definitely have a space. I got that question yesterday, so does that mean the operators are less relevant? The operators or the service providers definitely have a very important relevance to be able to enable all of these capabilities and all of these transformations. But what becomes important is for our operators, our customers, to be able to differentiate and determine where do they want to play. Is their core asset and the benefit that they bring and the value that they provide in the network? And are they going to ensure that they provide the best network performance? Or are they going to open up their network to allow new uh, APIs, new applications to be developed? Or are they going to combine it with content and fixed and mobile capabilities to be able to provide triple or quadruple play? These are the different capabilities that the operators can, and the different roles uh, that the operators can take on. And we see that type of differentiation as well. And we are providing services and products to operators as they differentiate in each one of these spaces. Whether it be on the connectivity and the infrastructure, the systems and platforms to be able to manage that, or the applications and services that go on top. So let's talk about Ericsson's strategy and Ericsson's strategic direction. As we transform, it is extremely important that we ensure that the area that we believe is the core of the company, that we continue to excel. So what we have done is we have basically segmented the strategy into three horizons. So the first horizon on the inner part of the, uh, the graph is the core business of Ericsson. And this is the vast majority of where the revenues and where the focus of the company is in terms of investments on R&D. This is an area where we will do a lot more of the R&D development ourselves because this is our core and core to the company. We also want to establish leadership in the targeted areas, and these are specific areas based on the trends that we see within the industry that we believe it's important for us to be strong in. All networks will be IP-based. It's important for us to have a very uh, good position on the IP side. We talk about virtualization and the importance of everything going into the cloud, so we are going to focus on cloud. The customer experience and how do you manage the customer and how do you differentiate the experience that the customer has and puts the importance on OSS, BSS. As I mentioned, video and media 
uh, will be the lo large majority of the traffic. So we are going to take a stronger position in TV and media. Every industry is being transformed. Everything will be connected. So industry and society are the specific verticals that we believe that we can add value and that as we gradually differentiate beyond the operator space. In addition, we want to look at new horizons or new areas for, for growth. One of the areas that we had in the last horizon was modems. And I think that's an, it, it's a good example of how we want to run the new horizon. We will try businesses. We will determine whether we believe we can have an important position within a specific business. And if we believe we can't, either because our position is not where we want it to be or because we would rather invest the money elsewhere, we will exit businesses. The objective is that we try things and we try and we decide very, very quickly whether we want to continue or we want to move out of a specific business and try other businesses. Our objective is as much of the things that we have within the new and targeted horizon become core to us and we continue to look for new opportunities. This is our transformation. This is how we ensure that we stay relevant and move beyond the first part of the inflection point into the second inflection point, or the second side of the inflection point. In the context of how we do this, in, as I mentioned, in the core area, the majority of what we will do will be in-house development. But that does mean that we, we may complement with partnerships, acquisitions, or strategic investments. And we will be complementing the R&D with all of those. You will see less acquisitions, partnerships, investments, specifically in this space, in comparison to what we have announced in the last few years, years in the targeted areas uh, or in, in the areas that we would like to grow. So this is just a, a list of some of the acquisitions that we have done specifically in these. And as we go into the discussion in the deep dive this afternoon, myself and Ulf, I will talk more in detail about some of these specific acquisitions and partnerships. And then last but not least, what we are looking at in terms of gaining a position in some of the new areas that we are developing, it's extremely important to be innovative, to establish a position, and sometimes that is easier to do either through a partnership, a strategic investment, or an acquisition than to do our own in-house development. So the amount of acquisitions will vary, the amount of investments uh, strategically as well as partnerships will vary more on the outer horizons than on the inner horizons, all part of our transformation. So if I go back to this slide, a lot of transformation, a lot of digitalization, a lot of mobility going forward and coming f uh, in front of us, extreme amount of transformation. And again, it becomes extremely important that we have the networks to be able to support that. And for that, I will ask my, uh, my colleague, our CTO, Ulf Evaldsen, 